Hi everyone, this is Veronica. Today we are going to talk about One Health concept. What is this? One Health philosophy. What are the zoonotic diseases and why today we are talking about them. So this is a channel study IQ. If you are preparing for any government exam, a pen drive and tablet courses are also available. For additional information, you can log into our website and see if you are preparing for any this UPSC CSC 2020 exam, our pen drive course is available. Now you can buy this course at Rs. 625 per month. So this course has been prepared by the top faculties of India and there is 100% coverage of UPSC vast syllabus. Now what is the relevance of this topic in your exam? It will be covered under mains paper 3 and at objective level you should know what is health, one health concept and subjective level why livestock health is important for the environment and human health and what are the livestock health issues also. So now here we are talking about zoonotic diseases. So first of all what are zoonotic diseases? See, there is this term zoonosis. So it is a name given to the diseases or infections that can be transmitted between the humans and animals. Now what is this zoonosis? It refers to the diseases actually that can be passed from animals to humans. So they are also known as zoonotic diseases. So whether it is known as zoonosis or zoonotic diseases. Now animals carry very harmful germs such as bacteria, fungi, parasites and viruses. These are then shared with humans and cause illness. So zoonotic diseases range from mild to severe and some can even be fatal. So zoonotic diseases just for example, for example rabies. This is the disease that affects the nervous system. Then there is Lyme disease, dengue, malaria, chikungunya. So in between we have vectors but these are also zoonotic diseases. Now coming to a topic frequent outgrowth, uh, outbreaks of zoonotic diseases. See not so long ago widespread prevalence of avian uh, influenza you might all have heard about it or bird flu as it is commonly known created nationwide and even globally panic resulting in the culling of millions of poultry birds. So many poultry birds, millions of birds were killed. So it was concern for human health. So why they culled all the animals? Because there was a concern for human health that prompted the extreme reaction and subsequently establishment of many protocols so that we can contain, there should be containment of avian influenza which is managed quite effectively now. Similarly in 2003 SARS that is severe acute respiratory syndrome emanated suddenly in China and it vanished soon because of the strict policies. Now such kind of zoonotic diseases they are always followed by use and panic all around. So these outbreaks culminated emergency response that included extreme measures like what are the extreme measures? Travel bans, restrictions, various kinds of restrictions. So in both the cases panic spread much faster than the virus. Besides drawing a response from the governments, these events also brought forth hit her to forgotten philosophy of One Health that we are going to discuss. So this idea basically what it recognizes, this idea of One Health, that there is an interconnectivity among the human health, health of humans and environment. That means if your environment is not good, so it will affect human health as well as health of animals. If health of animals is not up to the mark, then it will affect human health and the environment and vice versa same is the case with human health also now what is this concept of health world health one health concept see the world organization of animal health which is known as oie this is basically an abbreviation of its french title it summarizes the one health concept so basically it says that human health and animal health are totally interdependent and bound to health of the ecosystems in which they exist now it is not a new concept. It already existed even in the time of Hippocrates. In his treatise on airs, waters and places, he had urged the physicians that all aspects of patients' life needs to be considered including their environment also. And if there is imbalance in the environment, the diseases will outbreak. So One Health is not a new concept. Though it is of late, it is being formalized by various governance systems, various governments of different countries. Now they are taking the concept of One Health very seriously. Now why there is rise in the outbreaks? See as human population is expanding. See human population over explosion is just the main problem for 
every problem there's environment problem ecological problem pollution problem so human explosion is one of the cause so as human populations expand it results in greater contact with domestic and wild animals so it provides more opportunities for diseases to pass from one to another then climate change deforestation intensive farming they further disrupt the environment so if now the environment is getting disrupted that means human health will be affected animal health will be affected because all these three are three are interdependent now according to oie 60% of existing human infectious diseases are zoonotic in nature that means they spread from animals to humans that is they are transmitted through animals to humans and 75% of emerging infections human diseases have animal origin now of the five new human diseases appearing every year so if there are five new diseases appearing three of them are have a source animal in origin so emerging infection human diseases have an animal origin so it, if this is not scary enough then see 80% of biological agents with potential bioterrorist use are zoonotic pathogens pathogens are the disease causing microorganisms now what the terrorist you see what they use they use guns weapons but bioterrorism means if they will use some pathogen to attack a community so if any disease outbreak took place it can kill millions of people so it is estimated that zoonotic diseases account for nearly 2 billion cases per year resulting in more than 2 million deaths also and more than which are even more than hiv aids and diarrhea together so 1/5 of premature deaths in poor countries are attributed to the diseases which are transmitted from animals to humans so urgent steps and care is needed which is required human required a regular diet of animal protein we cannot avoid this because humans do need animal protein for their good health now this calls for strict health surveillance to incorporate domestic animals livestock and poultry too thus there is loss now what we see usually loss of food animals on account of poor health animals have poor health and they die or disease too becomes a public health issues even though there are many maybe no disease transmission so in this case we also lose 20% of our animals this way that they fall help uh, ill because of their ill health now talking about india it is actually a forerunner of global health who was set up in 1948 among other objectives it has one of the objective to promote cooperation to control human diseases india was a founding member and india hosted the first meeting of who southeast asia regional committee october that year and india was one of the founding member in hosting this particular summit the cooperation and co- collaboration among nations to control contain animal disease is achieved is one of the objective of who that they need to achieve and this has been recognized as early in 1924 when oie was established to fight animal diseases at global level and india has been at the forefront of both these apex bodies though for different reason because we have large number of population we have lot of population which is very poor and these outbreak of these kind of diseases can actually harm our country health of our people people and ultimately the economy of the country will suffer so india is at forefront now this is very amazing to know that the size of india's human and animal population is almost same we have 121 crore people according to 2011 census and 125.5 crore livestock and poultry so a network of 1.90 lakh health institutions in the government sector form the backbone of health governance which is supported by large number of private facilities also and on the other hand you should know to treat 125.5 crore animals there are 65000 veterinary institutions also which are there to meet the needs of these animals livestock and this includes 28000 mobile dispensaries and first aid centers with bare minimum facilities also now there is a need for a robust animal health system as i know they are interdependent these three things human health animal health and environment so private sector presence what is the problem firstly private sector presence in veterinary services is close to being non existent and unlike a physician a veterinary doctor is always on a house call or on account of the logistic challenge of transporting livestock to the hospital unless they are domestic 
pets so there could not be a stronger case for reinventing the entire animal husbandry sector so that we are able to reach every livestock farmer not only for disease treatment but for the prevention and surveillance to minimize the threat to human health because surveillance and prevention is very important what happens in india otherwise for example we have seen of lately the outbreak of west nile fever when the outbreak takes place then we become very active but these things can be prevented at early from the animal source also because early detection at animal source can prevent disease transmissions to the humans and introduction of pathogens into the food chain so a robust animal health system in the first and is a first and crucial step in the human health now what is the way forward that you can talk about see the developing countries for example like india they have much greater stake in strong one health systems on account of the agricultural system which are resulting in uncomfortably close proximity of animals and humans so this basically uh, builds a strong case for strengthening the veterinary institutions and the services in our country the most effective and economical approach is to control the zoonotic pathogens at their source so this is very important point and it calls not only so there should be a collaboration at all the levels be it local regional and global levels we have to be active at every level regarding the veterinary health and environmental governance and there should be a greater investment of funds also in the animal health infrastructure so if the animal health is good our animals are healthy so the environment will be healthy human health will be healthy humans will be healthy so this is the way forward this is all about today's lecture thank you you can connect with me on instagram and facebook thank you